Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 26th of September 2011. We're undergoing a severe geomagnetic storm at the moment with a KP index of 8. But more of that later. But first, our trivia question is in the form of a riddle today. He was the dragon pirate of the sea whose fires singed a king's beard. He sailed on a pelican that turned golden, but was held at bay in California, and finally vanquished in Panama. His treasure hoard was sought greedily in Iowa. Who was he? And what amazing nautical feat did he complete on this day many years ago? The answer will be given at the end. When we go to the GOES X-ray plot, we see that we've had at least three M flares and a myriad of C flares, which I can't be bothered to count, frankly. So let's take a look at the active regions to find out what's going on. We have five officially numbered regions on the disk. Region 1303 is right on the edge of the west limb and will be gone by later today. So let's start with region 1301 that's just to the west of Sun Center. Neither region 1301 nor region 1304 produced any significant flares over the last 24 hours. Region 1301 may have decayed slightly, but it's really hard to tell with so many small spots spread over such a large area. Certainly region 1304 to the south and east seems to have grown somewhat. These spots seem larger and more prominent. Next, let's turn to region 1302 in the northeast. It's still a very large region, although Noah thinks that it has decayed slightly. I'm not sure whether it's decayed. What do you think? However, it has produced 7 C flares and 4 M flares in the last 24 hours. Trailing along behind it is the new region, region 1305. And following that to the east, just on the limb, is a very similar looking region, uh, which has not yet been numbered. Neither of these regions have produced any activity as yet. So all in all, solar activities remain rather high. Um, most of that due to region 1302. However, there have been some over-the-limb flares in the west from regions 1303 and 1295. Now let's follow the evolution of these regions as they cross the disk. Particularly, I'd like to focus here on region 1302 as it becomes more visible. Is it growing or is it decaying? That is the question that will determine how much more activity we have over the next few days. I had hoped to make some special videos of each of the individual active regions like I did yesterday. However, Helio Viewer was not cooperating today and when I got the downloaded images they uh, wouldn't render in my video. So I'm, we're going to have to make do with the ordinary SDO 24 hour uh, plots. Anyway, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on even that said. I just sit back and enjoy it as the sun puts on a fireworks display for us. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, there's a lot of uh, regions to look at. We don't seem to have a lot coming over the northeast limb, but there's this cute little loop that is uh, down in the southeast here uh, that I just loved, so I thought we'd zoom in on that for today. Once again, the SOHO chronograph is showing us a very exciting time. I challenge you to find how many coronal mass ejections you see in this 48 hour period. There's quite a lot there, I guarantee it. And there is still no sign, as far as I can see, of the comet Elenin. I assume that when it broke up, it became too faint to be seen. Uh, when I next go into NASA, I'll ask uh, to see if they have found it in their process data. We can see the beginning of the geomagnetic storm in the solar wind trace from the ACE spacecraft. The temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind all suddenly jumped about uh, six hours ago. So that's the onset of the uh, coronal mass ejection hitting the Earth. The high energy electron flux takes a nose dive as it normally does under these circumstances. And at long last it looks as though we've reached the peak of the proton event that we've been in for the last couple of days. The auroral zone at the North Pole is looking very angry at the moment which is more evidence that we're in a geomagnetic storm. And then when we look at the KP index we find that in the last three hours it's jumped to level 8 which is severe storm level. The NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center is carrying the current level of geomagnetic storm at G2. However, it could go as high as G4. If that should happen, then there are a number of consequences. High latitude power grids may suffer large voltage spikes and systems could trip out. Spacecraft are not immune from these effects either. Charging on the surface of spacecraft can cause single events upsets. 
and other earthbound technologies are also vulnerable to space weather at these sorts of intensities. Oil pipelines are one example. High frequency radio propagation can become sporadic and satellite navigation systems like your GPS can be inaccurate. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the C1 level. Sunspot number is at 108. The radio sun intensity remains high at 190 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has jumped to 660 kilometers per second with a density of greater than 10 protons per cubic centimeter. And currently we have geospace conditions that are rated as severe storm. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are certain, M flares are likely, X flares are still possible. The sunspot number I think will ease lower. Coral mass ejections remain very likely. Solar wind speed will go higher. And a geomagnetic storm is likely. Looking at the composite coronal image, we don't have any major regions due back for three or four days, but there is a small region due back in a couple of days in the northeast. The answer to the riddle is Sir Francis Drake and the tremendous navigational accomplishment that he achieved this day was his circumnavigation of the globe. As for the elements of the riddle, he was known as the Dragon Pirate by the Spanish. He was said to have singed the beard of the King of Spain, Philip II, when his raid on the uh, harbour of Cadiz sank most of the intended Armada ships delaying the Armada another year and enabling England to prepare for it. The part about him sailing on a pelican that turned golden was that his ship was originally called the Pelican but was somewhat fancifully renamed the Golden Hind. There is a bay in Northern California called Drake's Bay where he is believed to have landed on his trip around the world. Drake finally died in Panama and the part about his treasure hoard being greedily sought in Iowa there was a con artist in Iowa in the 1920s who went round everybody called Drake asking them for money to sue the British government to return their part of Drake's fortune which he claimed was wrongly seized by the British government at, upon Drake's death and with interest this would have been worth trillions of pounds at the time and many many people fell for this losing their life savings. Oddly the confidence trickster himself was fooled by this same scam earlier he thought it was such a good idea, he started to try it on other people. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.